Well, I will get all she has a smell of my mahani, never says some of them kill a savage, fitting full share of roof and shine you quick or a snootron, Agus with the Kelure le Kele law, Ellen Podrick, or Nerv. I'm absolutely delighted to welcome you all here today as we're celebrating our national patron, St. Patrick. Uh, it's always a very important occasion for the Irish at home and abroad, and indeed in my message in English and in Irish, I mentioned how not only is it a great occasion for the Irish who are celebrating at home and abroad, but also for those who are interested in things Irish, uh, our culture and our literature uh, and the Irish people themselves. But we, Sabine and I have for the last five years been every using this particular reception on St. Patrick's Day to celebrate an area of excellence in Irish life. So. We were thought that maybe this was time to just draw the attention of the Irish people to the important contribution made in the past, but particularly being made in the present by science and technology. And what an enormous part it is playing in the very positive aspects of Ireland's reputation all over the world. And the five countries I visited this last just last year, Laos and Vietnam, and Peru and Colombia and Cuba, all being visited for the first time uh, by an Irish president. The reputation of the welcome for things Irish, and again and again, uh, scientists' names are mentioned. Very, very often, when people speak about uh, Ireland's achievements, they naturally move to this for a country of its population size, of having won so many Nobel Prizes in, in literature, uh, four in a language that we took over and adopted and remade. <laughs> <laughs> I actually really think it's five because you should count Eugene O'Neill in uh, uh, as well. But in all of that, some of the things that's very important, particularly after I had had a consultation on ethics and, with, and also the earlier one with young people, is that in the history of human thought, uh, science, culture, curiosity have gone together. It's very interesting in the very earliest uh, studies of, of physics and, uh, and philosophy were never separated from each other, one of the great rich classic periods. And also I was always very interested myself since a long time ago when I went to study in the United States for the first time. It was, if you like, the decline of the certainties and the rise of probabilities and possibilities. So today I'm absolutely delighted to welcome citizens who've excelled in science and technology. Uh, those of you who are, but maybe the most important thing one can do in life is to be a good teacher, uh, leading curiosity and encouraging others. Those involved in pure science, and it's very, very important. I very much support the view of all those scientists who signed le public letters some time ago on the importance of fundamental science. It remains my view. Uh, science is such an important and influential discipline, and it is now central to the great issues of our time. The great events, heads of state all around the world of 2015 was the signing of the Climate Change Agreement, uh, the response in Paris, and also in relation to the development in New York on sustainable development. And I often remind people these days to try to frighten them into reality about demographic projections that by 2050, 24% of the population of the planet will be in the continent of Africa, 40% of the young people. And therefore, how do you, should we deal with this? And should we not have science leaping over borders? And should we not have startups and new situations and so on? So I see very much science and technology, those of you who are here, and uh, uh, making really in a crucial position, in a very, very important position uh, for, 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 for the world. Now today, as well. I'm so pleased as I on the line to welcome so many uh, young people from the Young Scientist Exhibition. I really, the founder of that concept is here with us, Mr. Scott, and I thank you, Dr. Scott, and I want to pay tribute to him. And uh, that, that it, uh, concept is going, I understand, is going to be developed now in, in the United Arab Emirates, and so on, which is a great example of a powerful idea immigrating, uh, migrating. And therefore, because every year I go, one of the things that strikes me uh, is about 
something that Edward Seed said a long time ago, everything interesting happens in the interstices. And one of the things that young scientists produce are contraptions of one kind or another, which is one of the most beautiful words in the English language, a uh, contraption. And they put things together, and they, go, they take from different disciplines within science. And I'm so pleased that we've had some of the former winners, this year's winner, the former winners from uh, other years here. And uh, people who come there uh, are just in awe uh, of, of that. And also something that there's a lesson in it, because science teachers are here too, is that if you ever notice from which schools uh, all the projects are coming, if you went to the trouble of going through the list, where there's a good teacher who's interested. And that's the generosity of science teachers, who, teachers who encourage their students to come forward every year. I'm so pleased there's so many people from different disciplines in the universities and the institutes of technology uh, are here. So many of the agencies too, uh, feeding the wild is still important. Uh, in responding to global hunger, but also responding in a way that will not deplete soils and will take account of cultural settings is very important. So this room has more intelligence in it now than it has had for a very, 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 very long time. And also, you're going to be you're going to be hearing uh, you're going to be hearing wonderful uh, 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 cultural contributions in in, in, in just a moment. Uh, reminding us yet again, if we needed to say, is that art and science have always lived together. And those of us who were looking at the drawings, the Da Vinci drawings, for example, science and, and art and what is used as tools to explore the world. As he was, for example, he's a great example of someone who was continually inventing things, not only a remarkable painter, but producing drawings for helicopters and submarines and diving suits and other things, and including the man down in Barry Vaughan who invented a submarine. Da Vinci is, is one of the great public figures whose achievements have, I think, demonstrated the history of, of, of culture, the complementary relationship between art and science. Uh, finally, I would just say there's one, many people miss some points, that Albert Einstein was an accomplished musician. And here's the last one that Hollywood actress, Hedy Lamarr, invented an early technique for spread spectrum communications that are so essential for wireless communications. And Richard Feynman played the bongo drums, that Beatrix Potter produced significant writings in the field of mycology. And really the one that interests me most, that Brian May, lead guitarist from Queen, is an astrophysicist. <laughs> I think that in all of this, that you, you're all well aware of this, you see, so it's redundant. But, uh, but I think that the science laboratory and the, the work of scientists working together and the artist studios are spaces of wondrous exploration about the importance of not just validating, protecting and making possible curiosity when first steps are taken towards unknown destinations, new de ideas are developed. I, I think that... Uh, what I think is very well as well, it is the important, is, is the independence of the thinking that is important. And our respect and defense of the independence, this is why I very much privilege my own thinking, <coughs> what I have to say myself, in relation to fundamental science. To be very wrong if science and its technological application were confined to any short-term limits. I think then as well, uh, there are uh, artists uh, those of us who use words, as I did in the past when I was writing poems as well, uh, I think words are, are, are very, very uh, important. Uh, words can liberate and words can threaten, and language uh, is important. So there's a huge difference between imitation and also sometimes the misused word innovation which is repeating and practicing and imitating what someone your neighbor has. But actually, creativity involves a lot more. Uh, in Irish, it's crochet. It is a lot more involved in creativity. And there is the discipline and the preparation and the waiting for the arrival of the serendipitous finding, which in fact is the history of all science, and also the same in relation to composition and music. So I think that uh, this is so, you are all so welcome here, and uh, I think.
the last point I wanted to say is that I had an opportunity of speaking to some engineers last year about the importance uh, of STEM graduates and of, if you like, you know, while significant achievements have been made and some of the most brilliant people in this room are women scientists and female scientists, but also as well as that in relation to the structure of manufacturing, the structure of industry, the structure of different forms of collaboration in science and particularly in institutional uh, architecture, it's important that we realize that we need to change a great deal more so as to have the full benefit of the equal participation of both genders in science and technology and its applications. I think then, uh, uh, I think we, have, we are making a, a great step forward. You know, sometimes when I've been, as I said, I visit, mentioned five countries that I visited just in the last few months, but when I visit other countries and all of the time, people occasionally write rather, not very, somewhat shallow articles on the Irish economy about why people are interested in coming here. The answer is, of course, uh, the enormous creep, the enormous possibilities in human intelligence and so forth. Our importance, I think, is in fact to show that it isn't ever narrowed and therefore that it is delivered in such a warm atmosphere as made people want to live here in an atmosphere not just of curiosity but as a friendship and being able to exchange uh, ideas. I think I have recently said that in relation to the export sector abroad that in the new circumstances we are dealing with new markets and so forth, it isn't a case of individual companies competing with each other from Ireland, but rather cooperating with each other to create new opportunities abroad, and that is the future. I want to say how <coughs> pleased I am, Ms. Minla, Marfakal's Kedero Arish, Kotovu de Kisatan, Nehitor Shulakis, Nehinstitutis, Nahalskoya, Akas Nakoliti Suya. I'm so pleased that in 2017 we will be recording that St. Patrick's Day, the special area uh, that we had honoured here in, in Oris and Uthron, uh, it was science, technology and all those who are working in it at all ages and in whatever circumstances. And Sabina, would you want to join with me in wishing you on continual enjoyment in your curiosity and may you make many leaps across the different boundaries and may you always remember that science is a crucial part of culture and some of the very, very best innovations in relation to the human mind but also more important in relation to human society are when science and culture and in happy harmony with each other. Arish Garamina Mahathir thank you for coming.